Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Fabulites. Walking and talking today about sugar. I'm um, over the last maybe six months, year, this whole diabetes dialysis um, situation has just really been um, a big part of my consciousness because of my mother, really. Um, you know, it kind of became a part of my consciousness when I was in Mississippi and some people I would be trying to get with to pamper had dialysis two or three times a week and I'm like dialysis and it seemed like you know dialysis is just all over the place it's ubiquitous now in a way that I just I don't remember dialysis period um, it's, it's not as prevalent here in Detroit as it was in Mississippi from what I can tell but still it's a big thing. I think it probably is it's just the circles that you run in in Detroit are right. yeah that's right true. because it's like you see dialysis centers all over the place and I never grew up seeing any of them right why we need all this dialysis all of a sudden but um, you know just dealing with in our personal lives you know, it's, it's an ongoing conversation of, you know, a couple people we know having, you know, amputations. You know, sometimes, you know, people making their transitions, you know, before 40, before 35, um, who have been, you know, it seems like from the outside looking in, um, dealing with diabetes, sugar diabetes, they used to call it. I never heard of it as sugar diabetes till I read Sugar Blues. Oh, but, really? Right. Did you ever hear of the sugar? I never heard of the sugar. I just heard diabetes. But when I read Sugar Blues, they were talking about the sugar diabetes. But so just wanted to spend some time talking about sugar because sugar is ubiquitous. And, um, you know, kind of some of the ways that we get hooked on sugar. This is our organizing structure. Some of the ways we get hooked on sugar from just our chit chat thinking. Um, some of the reasons why we might want to leave sugar alone and then some strategies and techniques for releasing more and more sugar all right so i think we get hooked on sugar because the manufacturers put it in everything and don't even tell you it's in there so you gradually get to the point where if it ain't full of sugar it don't taste right right i remember watching a youtube video and somebody had put sugar in their mac and cheese and there was a whole big discussion in the and the comments about whether macaroni and cheese had sugar in it or not or should have sugar in it or not. Um, and so I think it kind of reminded me of reading the Sugar Blues and the, the author talking about the fact that in the 50s or whatever, there were a bunch of contests that Domino put out or whatever corporation put out to, um, you know, um, recipe contests. Like, give us your best Domino's recipes for casseroles, for... Um, you know, main courses for all of the things that we don't think of as, you know, typically sweet. You know, let's figure out some ways, Domino was saying on the DL, of getting, you know, more sugar in our diets, more uses for sugar. And so, you know, it became more and more common, I think, then for sugar to be used in all kinds of things that maybe it wasn't used in before. That was, that was. The right, and then if you win the contest, sometimes they put your recipe on the back of their product. Yes. In a magazine or start using it themselves. Yes, that's the benefit of, that's we don't have those contests anymore that I, well, I think we do kind of have them. I, I notice them every once in a while on products I have over the last years. But, um, so sugar, you know, as kids, I know cake and ice cream was a big thing for me. Um, Twinkies was a big thing for me. Going to the corner store, and I used to get soda, and um, I called it pop then. I didn't start using soda till I thought I was being sophisticated. <laughs> but I get pop and candy. Um, so I'm try I, like that's what I remember from, you know, from young, my early experiences with um, sugar. But not. But nowadays they have sugar in everything, so kids grow up eating it, expecting it not just in sweets and candies, but in everything. Right. If it don't have sugar in it, like you say, it don't taste right. Some people are like macaroni and cheese. You got to have a lot of sugar, a little sugar in it, to balance it out, make it, mm -hmm. you know, make it better. 
And when we read that book that we I read. I put sugar and greens before. Right. We used to remember. I remember you. I used to put sugar. I got this from you on grapefruit and watermelon and peaches. I mean, grapefruit and peaches. I saw somebody put it on watermelon. I couldn't do it. But it tastes so good when you put sugar on peaches. I think that was salt I was using. I don't remember putting sugar on peaches now. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's kind of excessive. <laughs> it's called peach cobbler. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but the last book we read for book club about sugar, I can't remember what it was called. But basically, they kind of established the fact that, you know, this, this eating of sugar all the time and having access to sugar the way we do is a modern phenomena. Sugar used to be something for the very wealthy and, you know, for them on occasion, it was not an all day, every day occurrence. You know, you didn't get up and put sugar, have sugared cereal and put, oh, when you look at the commercials for children, there's so much sugar. There's so much, you know. Well, and they disguise the names now, the high fructose corn syrup, the fructose, the set, the artificial sugars, which are chemicals and just as bad, if not worse for you. Um, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. So you just get in the, the habit of feeling like, you know, you got to have sugar and sugar is just, you know, normal. You get up, you have, you know. Sugar and coffee. Sugar and coffee and a donut. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You go to lunch, you have pop. Right. You, you, if you look at these Happy Meals or these meal deals, it's always, you know, mm -hmm. a soda included with them. Yep. And a soda instead of water, you know, so you're drinking more soda, less water. Those are your fluids, the sodas. Right. Um, so sugar is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's in all kinds of products. And the corporations are slick. Now that people are kind of more aware, oh, high fructose corn syrup is bad or sugar is bad, they changed the name, they changed the marketing, you know. They say natural flavoring, which can be anything. Right. So it's everywhere and we have to, you know, be aware of it. We start off eating it when we're young. I was thinking about a funeral I was at the other day and it's kind of like, you know, even at the funeral and the funeral is for the living. Oh, I heard somebody say about the movie Soul Food. You know, the mama made her transition, you know, as a result, some might say, of the types of food she ate. But the whole movie was an orgy and a celebration of those types of foods. You know, overly fat foods, overly sweet foods, overly salty foods. And it's not just that movie, it's our life. It's all day, every day. It's Thanksgiving dinner, it's Sunday dinner, it's the repast after the funeral. It's your Facebook, Facebook feed. Yeah. <laughs> We're constantly, you know, and these are like what we remember. This is like the good times. These are good things. You know, we have an, I have an association personally of soul food with, you know, good memories and family and, you know, good food and, um, you know, so kind of breaking that habit a little bit. Um, and then you think of all the conditioning, like if, you, if a woman has a heartache heartbreak then she gets a pint of ice cream and eats it or a quarter or a half gallon or whatever <laughs> but she eats the whole carton she doesn't just get a spoonful right <laughs> a cup full a bowl full she's gonna eat it all right you don't need a bowl just get the spoon and the, the ice mm -hmm. cream okay so I don't know personally how I got hooked on sugar but I remember as a kid I used to love Twinkies I used to eat two or three Twinkies a day um, so, I don't know if you remember your first experiences with sugar and getting hooked on to sugar, connected with sugar. I don't remember eating Twinkies and that kind of stuff every day growing up. We didn't have it like that. Um, it was probably Kool-Aid. Oh, Kool-Aid. We think that's black. If you ain't got Kool-Aid, uh, you, you ain't, ain't black. You ain't got nothing. And the most sugar you add, the blacker you are. Mm -hmm. And you, right, you can't afford pop all the time. So Kool-Aid is what you drink every day. Pop was a special occasion treat. <laughs> you know? Okay. Okay, so what are some of the reasons why we might want to release some, all of the sugar? <laughs> well, just on the nutritional living life better you know you do not need the sugar for your nutrition they call it empty calories 
It takes away from the stuff you should be eating. Right. It's not just empty as in neutral. It's, it's, it's actually detrimental. detrimental calories. They they absorb. It's it's negative. Right. It's absorbing. It's dehydrating. It's denutritifying. Right. That ain't a word, but it's you, our word you, today. You pull off that so you don't eat the stuff that's good for you. Um, it hypes you up so that you're hyperactive. So if you're a child, then they got an excuse to put you on drugs to condition you. Or your children, they have an excuse to put your children on drugs to right. condition them. Right. Politically, we talked about the politics, you know, of sugar. Yeah. That these corporations got us conditioned to pay them to make us sick and then pay us, pay them to quote unquote heal us. So the whole sugar industry is part of the agricultural pharmaceutical industry, which is some bullshit. But we're paying for it coming and going. out of the enslavement industry. Which spawned. That started the whole sugar thing. That's us being able to um, plant and process and, and grow the sugar. Right. What made it. enslaved people. What made it so cheap and widely accessible. It, and I mean, it's still a, actually an enslaving yes. process. You know, if you look at sugar production now, it's basically slave labor. Right. From what I can gather. I mean, looking on YouTube for whatever that's worth. But you definitely get the impression that it's very labor intensive. Um, so the politics of, you know, how many of our ancestors and how many of our contemporaries suffer and die for something that's not even you know, let alone being necessary, it's not beneficial and it's detrimental to us personally, our physical right. body and our spiritual bodies as well. Just stop here. Yeah. Um, um, so what other reasons to not do sugar? You wanna turn around? Well, we've talked about nutrition, we've talked about the whole political ramifications. Um, it's kind of a, a spirit of resistance, you're resisting all this stuff when you say I'm just not going to do it and there's so much propaganda and there's so much out there that's like you have to this is what we do you know and we this is what we do we eat sugar this is what we do we eat cake at the repast this is what we do we eat peach cobbler and pies at Christmas this is what we do we I don't know we drink Woo! do we drink and you know alcohol is sugar is sugar processed foods in general when you're talking about um white rice you're talking about sugar but white potatoes are not technically a processed food but a lot of times your body receives that as sugar um, so resistance we want to get in the practice of resisting <laughs> resist everything if it ain't for you resist it work on practice strengthening your resistance muscle you know yeah one of the things that helps with the sugar cravings is amino acids so if you use Bragg's liquid amino acids as seasoning for your food instead of salt you'll find out that you have less desire for um, the sweet things so everything that I think that we can do to help every little bit helps drink more water drink more water so you're diluting the impacts of the sugar that you're still trying to you know stop eating um, eat more whole foods so that if you're getting foods. sugar in the form of apples don't eat the apple juice eat an apple and drink some water and drink some water um dang it's something else i was gonna say now i i kind of got off the amino acids because i read some article that freaked me out miss bella Rusty, come on girl um i read some article that creeped me out but years ago when i first started trying to figure out how to get off sugar someone had suggested sesame seeds um raw sesame seeds and you throw those in your smoothies or throw them in your mouth, they help with sugar cravings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have found that since I started using the amino acid, and I don't plan to do it forever, I just want to help help me get over that hump. I mean, amino acids are have, very popular. People do yeah. use them forever. I'm not, I don't- Right, but I'm saying for me personally, I try not to use anything forever if I can avoid it, and I just want it to get me over the hump mm -hmm. of the sugar cravings, and I think it's healthy. When I first, the first time that I got off sugar, I just um, gradually got off sugar. Um, I was changing my whole diet. So I stopped eating meats, I stopped eating dairy, and then I stopped eating sugar. Um, so that was the first time. 
The second time I focused on refined white sugars, just trying to eliminate all the refined white sugars um, and processed sugars from my diet. So I was still doing agave maple syrup dates. Um, those are really good in smoothies if you're not a, a date eater. And smoothies, four or five, three or four, two or three, depending on your, mm -hmm. your sweetness meter, are really nice in a smoothie. Um, agave maple syrup. Um, I would do evaporated cane juice sometimes, but just trying to improve the quality of the, the sugar. sugars that I was eating. Right. And, you if know you're that. do honey, get raw local honey. Right. Because there's a lot of information out there that you can research about, you know, how these honeys a lot of times are, you know, kind of, they're not really honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're sugar, high fructose corn syrup mm -hmm. coloring. So, yeah, raw local honey, definitely, if you're going to do honey. Um, but, you know, just whole foods, um, switching out for higher quality and continue to try to figure out how to switch out for a higher quality food sweetener and needing less sweeteners you know I noticed we were in the habit of after dinner every night what's for dessert and so how do we break that habit of thinking we need to have a dessert you know after mm -hmm. dinner now sometimes I notice I've gotten out of that habit when I would go to the museum I go to that drugstore across the street get something sweet get something salty it was <laughs> like you know I had gotten in this habit of if I'm be at the museum I'll be getting some sweet and salty it was just a habit um, but I'm, you know, working on breaking that habit because I'm like, that's not productive. Um, what One of the things that I did when I was trying to get over the sugar addiction is I would say affirmations like sugar is evil, sugar that is That ain't no devil. affirmation. Sugar. Well, that's true. But was, <laughs> <laughs> that's a defamation. Right. <laughs> but, um, but I love my body. I'm taking good care of myself. I'm feeding myself healthy things. But I still, I use the sugar is evil thing all the time. I hear my mother say it. Sugar is evil. And it is. It's, 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 it's sat satanic. It leads you into a whole mess of shit. Amputations, uh, alcoholism, alcoholism, dialysis. So it's definitely Overweightness. Evil. Yeah. The stupor. We were talking about the sugar and the alcohol stupor and how sometimes it's hard to process. You know, when you get that sugar high and that sugar rush and you're just kind of, you know, stuck in stupor, you know. And so how do we resist when we can't even analyze, you know, what's going on when we can't, you know, figure anything out, you know? Yeah. All right. And then oh, they my tell, gosh. I was going to say, then they tell you resistance is futile. But we so don't believe always, that. It's always conditioning. <laughs> right. When we hear resistance is futile, we laugh. <laughs> <laughs> resistance is everything. Resistance is everything. <laughs> um, so look, it's almost 20 minutes of talking about sugar. What are your tips for releasing sugar? What are some of the challenges that you have with letting it go? Another thing is just the mental thing. Um, you know, I'm paying somebody money to make me sick. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm taking this alcohol and then I got a hangover so I done paid somebody money so I can drink this stuff that's gonna make me sick. I'm paying somebody, you know, for this sugar and then I got diabetes or ongoing issues, I'm paying somebody to make me sick, you know? Yep. Um, so just, you know, what are you, call a thing a thing, sugar is evil, this is some bull. Now I might choose to eat it today, but you know, let me call a thing a thing. Let me say, call it for what it is. And um, you know, try to release my mind from it. And then, you know what they say, free your mind and your booty will follow. <laughs> That's not what they say, you know what they say. <laughs> That's what I got for y'all, Fabulites. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It was Angela with Mama Ivy. Be you, be fabulous, be fabulous you. Peace. Oh, and Bella. Where's she at? Yeah, Bella was here too. Bye, she on. Bye.